Okay, so I've changed some stuff around in the shop. Uh, if you remember the Cincinnati Mill, I <clears throat> sold that to a friend of mine. And now I have this one where it, the Cincinnati used to be. It's just sitting here on blocks right now. I've got to move it somewhere. And uh, right now I can get my um, pallet jack under it to move it pretty easily the way it's sitting. So I've just, I've got to uh, figure out exactly where I want to put it. I'm thinking maybe I might even put it over here somewhere in this corner. But I'm not sure. I'll figure it out. Um, I was going to move the Howa from where it's at here to over here. But what I'm thinking is if I get a CNC mill, which is what I want eventually to do, I'm thinking over here might be better because my power box is right here. And so is my phase converter. So I can come out of here to uh, whatever CNC mill nice and close, not have to run a whole bunch of wire to the other end of the shop. And I should be able to get a, a lathe through here easier than a mill. This thing is just stinking massive. <laughs> I basically moved everything around this. So I put my table here and I took the drill press off of it. So the drill press, when it was on it, um, I had to come out from the wall probably that far, almost a foot, because of the back of the drill press would hit the wall back here. So this gives me the ability to push this all the way up against the wall. And these are here temporarily, but I'm going to uh, put plywood here, build some shelves, and a lot of this stuff is going to go over here in this area. Um, had these on a little roll around deal for a while. I took them off of that because they just fit nice and snug under there. But this will give me a place to put parts uh, that I might need to work on. Um, so when you've got stock like, like this that you need to work on, then I can pull these out. I can sit them here, easily go back and forth into the mill and let it do its thing. So um, I'm not sure about this just yet, but what I'm thinking, I may leave this here where I can sit down, have my laptop here. I've got a plug in there so I can plug my laptop in, set it here and work on something while... Maybe this is doing its thing. Um, I did buy a hammer um, as a backup for this one. And I bought one of these little spindly clingy things um, for the, the spindle. I also bought this. So this is Harbor Freight. Um, I didn't realize at the time, I thought this was just a vertical bandsaw. And they kind of do them, or I'm sorry, a horizontal bandsaw. And they sort of do themselves a disservice because at the store, they've got it sort of locked down in this position. And um, <clears throat> I had a bandsaw that I'd made a stand for. It was uh, one of those portable bandsaws that I'd kind of hacked together into a vertical bandsaw. Used it all the time. It was fantastic. I loved that thing. Um... But this one, after I got it home and got it put together, I realized, hey, this is actually a vertical bandsaw as well. So you've got this, but that can come off and you can put the uh, table on in its place. So <clears throat> if you want to use it as a vertical bandsaw, uh, this can go on with those two screws and you've got a nice vertical bandsaw. Um, this works very well for my shop because it's small. I can use it. It, it kind of has dual uses. And when I'm done with it, I can literally just roll it over out of the way into a corner or, or whatever. So that was pretty handy. This stand, a buddy of mine had it and I don't have a clue what it was for, but you notice it's got leveling feet as well as the wheels. So you can roll it to where you want it. And then you can literally level the table using those feet. Um, I bought this a while back 
the surface plate from Travers. And I've been wanting to kind of have a little more of a, this is just something I had laying around to kind of set it on, but I want a, like an inspection station of some kind. So what I'm thinking about doing is building something here. And it, matter of fact, this opening almost perfectly fits that <laughs> surface plate. So what I've thought about doing is building something to where the surface plate can either sit level with this or maybe up high a little bit and have a way of leveling it on each corner to where you can pull this in, set it down, level the surface plate here. So this would be kind of a coarse adjustment down here and then a finer adjustment up here. Maybe put some of my inspection stuff down on that bottom shelf there and, you know, and be able to inspect parts and things like that. Um, the, the table... For whatever reason, I don't know why I never thought of this before, but this table, I needed to move this table. The table weighs probably 1,200 pounds. It is, uh, I don't know how thick that is, but <laughs> pretty thick, and it's cast iron. So this thing is massive and heavy. It's an awesome work table. Um, eventually, so you've got these troughs here. If you're working on something, all the fluid should, other than all these stinking holes that have been drilled in it, should be able to drain down into this trough and then there's drains at either corner that you can have drain into, you know, like a five gallon bucket or something. But um, the way I ended up moving this is, uh, where's one of those dollies at? Uh, here they are. Is these little dollies from Harbor Freight. So I went and bought four of these they are, I think with a coupon, I think I paid eight bucks a piece. But they're actually really nice. I got four of them. I put one on each corner of the table when it was over here. And I just rolled it over to where I wanted it. Um, I used a, where's that thing at? A tow jack to actually lift it up where I could get it and work on it. So this is a jack a friend of mine let me borrow. Um, I'm going to probably figure out how to duplicate this thing. So it's actually really handy. So I use this and my uh, port of power here. I actually prefer this. It's lighter and you know, you can sit back here and pump on it instead of having to do everything right where you're at. You can kind of put that where you need to. The problem with this is this is as low as this foot goes. It won't go any lower than that. So I'm thinking about trying to um, make one of these where it will go all the way to the ground. So this would effectively be my toe jack maybe get a couple more of these things at some point to where I could do some of that kind of stuff. Um, but anyway, so when I put my shelf here, I've got this, uh, or uh, plywood here, sorry. Uh, I've got this thing that I'm going to put on the wall here up high. So I'll have some storage up there for different things. And I'm probably just going to throw that rack away and probably add some more shelves in here for this so I can kind of store different things in there a little bit better. But, um, and I'm thinking about taking this vise off and the vise on the corner and making some kind of a <clears throat> mount that comes down the side here where you can slide a vise in here where you could actually pull it out if you needed to get, you know, kind of around it a little more or push it in. Um, and then these vices I could just sort of set under the table so they're not, you know, kind of in the way like they are a lot of times. But when you need them, they're awesome. Um, Got to have a vice. Uh, I'd have four more in a lot of ways. But they're very handy when you need them but they kind of get in the way when you don't and then i was thinking about taking this and putting it over here on this corner so that way when you're working here you know if you need to do something with a tool you can turn around you can use that that would be here change your tool out and these boxes 
Um, so these are drill bits and end mills, or end mills are down here. Um, they make a tap set as well, so a box that you can put all your taps in. So what I'm thinking about is having another row, not here, but over here on the wall of taps, because this box here is basically nothing but in, uh, taps and dies. So if I can kind of, and I've got a lot of duplicates and things like that as well. So as opposed to buying bottoming taps a lot of times, so, you know, your normal tap is like, this is a taper tap. And this is something I bought at Harbor Freight, but I'm telling you for, I think it's what, 30 bucks? You cannot beat these little sets of taps. And it's cheap enough that when I needed a bottoming tap, trying to find one I did it with. So like this, if you see the difference, see if I can zoom in or focus. Come on, focus. Nope, maybe not. I just ground that off because I needed threads all the way to the bottom of something. So all of those, anything that I've modified, this is kind of my set that I'll modify if I need to. And then this set is your kind of stock normal set. So what I'll do is I'll end up, you know, going in with this one to begin with. And once I get it close or get it mostly done, I'll come in with this one and kind of thread the bottom if I need to. Um, like I said, for the money, you cannot beat these little sets from Harbor Freight. Uh, these are your probably more common sizes, goes way down small and, you know, fairly large. And then I bought these sets as well. So they go quite a bit bigger. And these seem to be uh, maybe a little bit better quality than the other ones. But um, I've rarely broken these taps. I think I may have broken one or two out of all the sets that I bought. And I've got, I think, two sets here. I've probably given away a couple of sets. And I've got, I think, two sets on my truck or that I keep in my truck. Um, so, I mean, you really can't beat those sets for the money. Now, as I progress through this, I'm slowly replacing a lot of my taps with, you know, your a uh, little bit better taps for say machining uh well that one's broken but these are spiral taps so if you're using them on a cnc these do way better than these these are more hand taps <clears throat> but these got me pretty far overall i'm very glad i bought them but what i want to do is take a lot of this stuff and organize into those instead of having this set that takes up this whole drawer i can have you know where i've got end mills or you know um there's three number five drill bits there's a bunch of quarter inch in, or drill bits same basic idea i'll have all my quarter inch uh taps in one place all my you know 1032 taps in one drawer as opposed to this and all of that. Well, these are just extras that I've acquired over time. So I'd like to take all of these and kind of redo them to where I've got a little more organization in here. <clears throat> um, and, you know, do stuff like in here have more... Uh, shoot, I'm trying to think of... Things that I would like, this kind of stuff, measuring tools, that kind of thing, um, all through here. So, doing that, and right now, so down here, I've put, so these are all my files and punches uh, that I'll probably end up moving. More files, so I need to really organize this. So, I put all my one, two, three blocks down here. That's my extra tool setter. Uh, I forget what you call that thing, a stop, and sets of parallels, which these actually came from Harbor Freight as well. They're like 30-something bucks, but um, you might not be able to see that, but you see how rough the finish is on these. They still work. Um, they, they do everything you need to do. This, this part's ground better, but you can tell the 
they didn't spend as much time on these as like your your better quality um, parallels. Now that's a set that I bought recently. This set I've had for years, and you can see a big difference. So these came from Harbor Freight as well. You can see the finish on them is just way, way, way better. Uh, this was quite a bit better quality, I think, for the older ones than the newer ones. But the newer ones are still, from what I've seen, perfectly adequate. Um, then I've got two more sets here, uh, refractometers, and just miscellaneous tooling that I need to go through and uh, just organize better <laughs> than what I've got it now. So now that those are here, where I did have that behind me, I'm probably going to put a lot more tooling in here. I've got my little refrigerator over there that I'm probably going to pull in, put right here in case you get thirsty. <laughs> Uh, and I may even put a microwave out here somewhere. Um, so, yeah. Anyway, this is what I've done so far. I'm still trying to figure out exactly where I want everything. But as of right now, what I'm thinking is this machine may end up going in this area here. So, you'd have your milling machine... You could do second and third ops over here if you needed to. On this machine, take this machine and pull it over here, kind of back it into the corner because you need access to this side of the machine to you know, run it and change things. All your controls are over here. But on this side, you don't really have to get over here. There's nothing other than doing maintenance and things like that that you have to get over there to do. And the way I've been doing it is I set the back edge on a 4x4 and take a jack and just pick up on it, slide the set, and then take the, uh, what do you call that thing, pallet jack out from under it, and then block it up, and then slide in my other 4x4. So... I just keep it on those because it makes it way easier to move it around when I need to. Um, and eventually, this is probably going to go out of this area. Um, for whatever reason, this is an older cast iron, and it does not seem to have rust problems. One of the big reasons that I've spent so much money in here is you know, getting all of the uh, insulation, uh, putting in the air conditioner, Nothing rusts in this area. I live in North Carolina, and it is humid here. And everything in the other area of my shop rusts like you wouldn't believe. So if I put something out here, it will rust in a heartbeat. So um, I've got moisture. I've got oil dry sitting down here because there's just this wet spot right here that stays wet all the time. And even now, if you look at this pad, when I had this pad poured, um, I, this was the first concrete pad I ever had poured. Begged the guy to put plastic under it. I was told by multiple people, you need plastic under your concrete. And he swore up and down I didn't need it. And even now, you can see the darker spots. That's moisture coming up uh, because it's raining a little bit outside. And I can close the doors. I can leave the doors open. It don't matter what I do moisture comes up from the bottom every single time so anything i put in here and this is the uh cincinnati uh that i'm just i've just got it set out here for now until my friend makes room for it and uh i've got this drill press head if anybody wants it in, in north carolina i'll give it to you for free just come get it <laughs> um but anyway, so if I put stuff out here, it just, it rusts. So when I had this Cincinnati, I used to have this and my bridge port in these corners. So the two corners of my building here. And then I had my Lodge and Shipley here. And I had uh, my Monarch here for a while. Sold the Monarch and then I put the Howa here. But I would have to come out here and hose everything down with oil on a regular basis. Um, friend of mine gave me this stuff um, and this seems to be the best rust preventative I've ever seen 
So I tried a couple of other things, but that really seems to work well. So um, eventually, this area that's horribly framed in will eventually be another 20 feet that way. And what I'm thinking is the shaper will probably go out there and possibly even the howa. So this may turn into more a CNC shop than anything. So this may just be where I keep my CNC stuff and then my more manual machines may go in another place. So I may even have a CNC lathe here possibly or a CNC lathe over here or I may just keep it just like this and just add a CNC lathe and just make this strictly a machine shop and then put that over somewhere because I really I almost never use this machine um, part of it is I just don't know how <laughs> I've messed with it um, I've taken and tried sh messing with the uh, the tool bits and you know in all reality it is just so much faster to put it on here oh, or even my Cincinnati when I had it um, the one thing that I can see that this would be really awesome for would be if I want to do a dovetail or if I want to do a keyway, if I want to broach something, that's where this is going to be really handy. Uh, you know, make a pulley and you need a, a keyway in it for, um, you know, the little key thing you put in. I forget what it's called, but that's where I can really see this would come in handy. But I've just, I've, I've used it enough to be amazed at how it works <laughs> it's a really cool tool and i just can't bring myself to get rid of it uh it's like a little piece of history um i forget when this one was made but it was made it's way older than i am um it's a g and e and there's a let's see patented 1902 all the way up to 1918 so Maybe probably a hundred years old or somewhere in that vicinity. Just a neat piece of history. And that thing weighs probably 5,000 pounds. I mean, that little machine compared to this is heavier than that. Uh, this is as heavy as that. Um, so it's a neat machine, but not something I use every day. So I'm, I'm trying to keep this area more what I use on a daily basis. Right now it makes more sense to put it in here, uh, but eventually when I get my other shop put up, it's probably gonna go away, go in there. And even this may go in the other shop. But as of right now, I'm, I'm very glad I bought it. It was 300 bucks. Um, you know, you have to assemble it, but very happy with it so far, so. But anyway, I just wanted to do a quick update to kind of show you what I've done in the shop so far and give you a little tour of all the different things we've done. But I'm kind of happy about it. It's taken forever. I've, I've still got to level my lathe here, and I may do a video on that. Um, I don't even know if I do it right, but so far it's worked out pretty well. But eventually, I'm going to level this. But I'd loaned my uh, machine level to a friend, actually the guy that loaned me the, uh, the toe jack. So I'm going to get that from him tomorrow and see if I can get that done. And hopefully we'll be good to go. But anyway, have a great day. And uh, I guess a good Thanksgiving. It's coming up here shortly. So have a good one. Bye.